What's up, people? It's your girl, Adeola. Anybody know about the Mo Ibrahim Foundation? You know those guys that like to recognize and celebrate African leaders that develop their countries? So every year, they release an index of who's doing well among African leaders and uh, who's not doing so well, you know. Yeah, I like them. I like what they do. My only problem with the Mo Ibrahim Foundation people is that they have no respect for the giant of Africa. I'm talking about Nigeria. Can you imagine? They just released their 2012 index saying that the African country with the best government right now is Mauritius, followed by Cape Verde, Botswana, and Seychelles. In fact, they said Tanzania is now one of the top 10 countries in Africa that are doing well out of 52 countries. Yep. They claim that they arrived at their conclusions using 88 indicators drawn from 23 independent data providers in Africa and abroad. Of course, Ghana was also one of the top 10. I mean, excuse me. But uh, when it comes to Nigeria, yeah, they said the quality of government that we have right now, that uh, it dropped us down to the bottom 10. Mm -hmm. You know, like the 10 worst uh, governments in uh, all of Africa, you know? Hey, imagine huh? the South Africa, Kenya, Egypt, that they're all performing better than Nigeria. This is like, ooh. Yeah, I don't believe it. <laughs> I don't believe them. You know why? <laughs> because right now, as we're talking, the Minister of Information in Nigeria, Mr. Labaran Maku, he is going about doing, what is it again? Good governance tour. Yes. You know, going about talking about all the good things that the present government of Nigeria has done. The purpose of the tour is to measure the progress being made under our democracy and the challenges we still face. This is indeed a citizen's tour. Seriously, how can a country like that be in the bottom 10? I mean, even in America, they don't do this, what is it again, progress, uh, yes, good governance to go, yes. They don't go about talking about how good the government has been, yeah? So that should tell you that Nigeria should rank number one. In fact, this Minister of Information made his way to New York. Yes, you know, during our Independence Day parade here, yeah, since uh, you can't have a public celebration of Independence Day in Nigeria anymore. Yeah, you know. So he heard that we're having a party in New York, so he made his way here. Anyway, when he came to the Independence Day parade, this is what he said. We want to make sure that the trends move in Nigeria from north to west, east, south, as it used to be. By the beginning of next year, the trend will move again from Lagos to Ghana. You see, that is what I call a good government. Yes. The thing is, me, I don't care what anybody says. I know Nigerian politicians don't lie. Yes. By this time next year, my people, hey, we'll be riding in, in beautiful trains, you know, luxurious trains. Ah, thank God that they came all the way to America to tell us. You know, for those of you that don't want to go back home, eh? Now you see, you are missing out. From Lagos to Kano, from Lagos to Abuja, from everywhere will become modernized. Anyway, remember when the president said he was the most criticized president in the whole world? Yes, ah, you know, he said that same day. Eh? He said by the time he finishes his tenure, mm, that he will become the most praised president in the whole world. Hallelujah. Amen, Yare, Mr. President. You know me, I have faith in you. Just carry go. So, my people, I can assure you that even though right now we are in the bottom 10, Yes, but this time next year, Nigeria will be in the top 10. Trust me, that is how I keep it real. Speaking of having an exceptional president, Mr. Jonathan just released his budget for 2013. And it's only 4.9 trillion naira. In case you're confused, my people, that is about 5 trillion naira. Wait, there must be a mistake somewhere. Did I say trillion? Uh, Mr. Adebowale, why are we spending 5 trillion? 43 million naira to fumigate the premises of the Ministry of Finance. Hey, Madam Ngozi, Nana, wow, what kind of rats and cockroaches do you have in your premises, eh, in your corner corner, eh, that you will be spending 43 million on fumigation? Ah, the devil is a liar. Hey. Like, let's go on, let's go on. One billion naira for Mr. President's food. Ah, okay. <laughs> My people, I, I thought we were over this last year now. Ah, ah, but Mr. President, is it because the first lady had a, what is it, food poisoning? Eh? <laughs> is that why you have not added to the food budget? Ah, ah. I can't believe that the food you bought for 900 million naira this year has completely finished. Ah, ah. Um, 1.5 billion naira for welfare. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, in case you're wondering what uh, what is welfare. Mm. Uh, this includes, you know, spa treatment, massage, trips to Germany, you know, for two months, vacations, yeah. Hey, speaking of uh, vacation, mm. Madam Patience, the Honorable Permanent Secretary, our very own First Lady, is back from Germany. <laughs> Yes, I'm having a special Thanksgiving this Sunday. My personal one, you know, just to celebrate her return, you know. <laughs> you know, I told you, I told you that she's coming back. Yeah, where are those people now? The enemies of progress. The people that doubt it. Eh? Where are they now? They can't show their faces. Eh? Anyway, eh, we were talking about the, the budget thing, right? Yes. Uh, do you guys mind if we take a look at the budget of last year? Yeah, the one for 2012. Just to see, you know, what they said they would do and what they did. <laughs> so for 2012, right, the government said they would spend 900 billion naira on improving security in Nigeria. I mean, to put jokes aside, does anybody feel safer now in Nigeria than they used to? Seriously, you know, I don't joke. I, I know you're laughing, but seriously, do you feel safer in Nigeria now after they've spent 900 billion naira? That's more than five billion dollars. So, eh? Oh, I forgot. Look at me. <laughs> um, the former national security advisor, yes, the man bought a one billion naira house in Abuja. That is, in case you are wondering where the money went to, you know. Those are the little, little expenses. I mean, how much is one billion naira for a house? Seriously, those are the places that the money went to. Boko Haram is still alive. They've killed more people this year than last year, and they've disabled so many people. In fact, we didn't have a public celebration on Independence Day. Yeah, that's how bad security is right now in Nigeria. The number of gunmen has increased. The number of kidnappers has increased. There is still no emergency number that you can call if you're in danger. Firemen still don't have water in their fire trucks, and policemen are still collecting bribes on the road. Where did that money go to now? Eh? Even Pakistan is doing much better. Any of you guys heard about that girl, Malala, that was shot by Taliban? Imagine, the girl was shot in the head oh, at the close range. Ah, yet they were able to get her to hospital for emergency treatment and flew her to London for better care. You know, how many people have been shot in Nigeria and they survived? Tell me, especially at close range, on the head oh, eh? Seriously. <laughs> if that girl were to be shot in Nigeria, ah, you know, forget it. Last year, she made the budgeted 282 billion naira for the health sector. Imagine, our first lady still went to Germany for treatment. I know that they spent some of the 280 billion naira in Germany. I just hope they didn't spend all of it in Germany because it is very evident, my people, that that money was not spent on improving the hospitals that we have right now or building new ones, yeah. And don't forget the 54 billion naira set aside at the beginning of this year to repair all our roads and construct new ones. Mm. I mean, just take a look at the Lagos Ibada Express Road. Eh? Does that even look like a road to you? And that is supposed to be an express road. Ha! Ah, imagine. This is just to prepare your mind, eh? When they tell you they are spending another one for 2013, so you won't be disappointed. You know, my favorite part of last year's budget is the 78 billion naira that they put aside for the agricultural sector. Finally, a sector that has something to show for their money. We all heard about the cassava bread. So that one is a good thing, yes. Now, what baffles me is that in this new budget, you know, the one for next year, Mr. President said he will be spending 654 million naira to fuel his generator and buy new ones next year. Why is he telling us that electricity will become stable if he's budgeting hundreds of millions of naira to buy, you know, fuel for his generator next year? Eh? Is there something that Mr. President is not saying? You see? Hey, I'm just keeping it real. So speaking about budget, do you guys know that the president of South Africa, Jacob Zuma, spends 1.2 million pounds every year for the upkeep of his four wives. People have been complaining since he came into power about the cost of maintaining multiple wives, you know, and more than 20 children. Yeah! But when he married uh, his last wife this year, yes, some members of his party, they were like, only one wife should get the benefit from the state. I mean, one wife. Only one wife. One wife. Thank you, Jerry, Mr. Kibaki. Yes, they said since he decided to have more than one wife, that he should be able to support them without using state fund. Do you know each of these wives have our own secretary, our own staff, our own everything? In fact, the Zuma household has 31 drivers. Eh? Just in the household, 31 drivers. I said, hey, these women are powerful. It's good to be a first lady, especially in Africa. And um, 
Speaking of a uh, powerful first ladies, have you guys heard? Mm. The wife of the former prime minister of Ethiopia, yes, the one that died, mm. his wife has refused to leave the palace. So. Mm. I mean, she refused to leave for the new prime minister and his family. Yeah, just imagine. <laughs> They offered this woman and her children three different residential villas eh, in Addis Ababa. Eh? They said, ah, choose one. Ah, madam, you can't continue to stay in a presidential palace. You have to choose one. She refused. So. You know they've sworn in the new prime minister since last month. Yeah, but the guy is still practically homeless. I mean, well, yeah, you know what I mean? Because this woman won't leave. Well, I mean, he's living in the western suburb part of the capital. Yeah, but the woman has refused to leave. How can you be a prime minister for 21 years and not build your own personal house? And eh? it sounds like they were planning on being in power forever. My beautiful sisters, eh? if your husband assumes a position of power that comes with housing, Please, don't get too comfortable, I beg. Just make sure that you guys have your own personal house. Whatever happens to her, if she decides to leave, yeah, yeah, or if they eventually carry her out, I'll keep you posted. You know what I mean? I'm just keeping it real. So moving on to Kenya, a Catholic priest, that is Father Francis Riwa, has been heavily criticized lately because he's preaching that there's a healing power in urine. Mm, yeah, sorry, mm, that thing smells, please, yeah. Apparently, he drank a cup of urine in China that healed him of back pain. That is what he said. And since then, he's been proclaiming that urine can do wonders. Mm -hmm. In fact, he said it can cure HIV AIDS. Unfortunately for him though, his church members did not buy into the theory. In fact, one medical doctor in Kenya called the Reverend Father a crackhead. You know, Kai, that is so sad. What an insult. How can you insult a man of God like that now? But he was able to convince a group of people. What are they called again? The Charismatic Union Throng. Yes. And yeah, something like that. So they faithfully meet every Wednesday morning. You know what they do? They pray and then they drink their urine. <laughs> Seriously, I'm not kidding. They pray and then they go and drink their urine. Hey, hey! There are so many people that believe his story now that he opened his own university where people can learn about urine. Yeah, he called it University of the People. <laughs> I don't know why he didn't call it the, the Urine University, seriously. But you know, he called it the University of the People. And he furnished this university with computers so people can browse about urine, you know. And he teaches these people about the power of urine, the kind of urine they should drink, and the quantity that they should drink. University of the People, an institution where the people of Njeru, a village tucked in the heart of Meru County, go to learn about what Father Iwa says he has been researching on for years. Urine. But this Catholic priest likes putting everything into contest. A miracle of urine therapy. Urine is medicine. What? Urine is medicine. Okay, so for those of you that are now interested in urine therapy, this is how you drink it. Now, as you can imagine, the process of collecting is pretty simple. All you need is a clean glass and a full bladder. Voila! Ooh, it's warm. Just how I like it. Hot and fresh. Now, in terms of flavor, if you're new to this, or if you had asparagus last night, you probably want to cut it with apple juice. So here we go, to your health. See, it's just a joke. Ah, it's just a joke. Anyway, this is not just happening in Africa. Eh? There are so many people all over the world that also practice this habit. Hmm. There is this woman in Colorado that has become addicted to drinking her own urine. Eh? I'm addicted to drinking my urine. I drink it like I'm in a beer drinking contest. Sometimes tastes like maybe a little lemony. Carrie has also found other ways to consume urine besides drinking. I use urine for toothpaste. I think it's brightening my teeth from the inside out. I use urine under my eyes, in my ears, behind my ears, through my hair. Adding it to your bath is really good for your skin. Aged urine is real good for a lotion replacement. You put it in your skin and it completely changes the texture, moisture. This is my eye cup and I fill it up with urine and then hold it over my eye with my eye open. It's not easy, because it burns. That woman needs prayer. She needs deliverance, seriously. 
please pray for that reverend father too you know me i'm just keeping it real so last week i asked a question and some of you guys responded in your emails don't forget you can send me emails to let me know your thoughts about the show so my question last week was what needs to be in place so that people will stop taking loss into their own hands in nigeria you know so they will stop burning people because they still pepe in the market eh? so that was my question so uh, Chukwe Mika Great from Canada says there is no system that punishes offenders in Nigeria. Even the killers of Bola Ege have not been found till today. That is true. And he was the attorney general, the minister for justice. Well, Chukwe Mika, that's the truth right there. You can trust the police in Nigeria right now. But it is not an excuse for people to take laws into their own hands. Now Jafar from Kano says the jungle justice taking place in Nigeria can only stop when we have a free, fair, and credible election. Well, Jafar, let's all hope that's the case in 2015 that we have a free, fair election. So thanks for sharing your thoughts you know keep them coming now that i've told you about the budget of the nigerian president let me know which of his expenses you think is the most ridiculous and i'll read some of your answers on the next episode before i leave today i want you guys to see a little bit of mauritius that's a beautiful country in africa <laughs> All right, y'all, it's been real, and I'm keeping it real right up in here. Until next week, I'm gonna see y'all later. Peace out.